this is from module 9.2, conditions for parallelograms. So our central question is what criteria can you use to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? Um, our shortest answer, I know, is uh, the opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so again, let me draw just a rough little drawing here. Got a parallelogram or a quadrilateral. We're not 100% sure yet if it's a parallelogram. Okay, so that's the situation. The opposite sides have to be congruent. Okay, so that's one of the uh, criterion that have to be uh, satisfied. Um, the opposite sides are also parallel. So this side's parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. So that has to also be a criterion that needs to be satisfied. Uh, one angle is supplementary to both the consecutive angles. So basically this angle here, angle one, for example, plus angle two uh, have to add up to 180 degrees. All right, that's what it means. So that is also another condition. And then um, the pair of the opposite angles have to be congruent. That means angle one is congruent to this angle on the opposite side. So it's also very similar in the measurements. It's uh, congruent. All right, and then this angle right here is the same as angle two. So that's basically what they're talking about. Also, the uh, diagonals, don't forget, still a part of the conversation. They have to bisect each other. So again, this side should be the same length as this side. And this length right here should be congruent to that length there. So those are the criterions that it's talking about in its answer. All right, so let's go ahead and start looking at proving um, the criterions. We're going to first look at the opposite sides uh, criterion. So basically, the theorem says if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we're going to go ahead and look at this proof right now. Um, so if we were to actually uh, start this proof, it says here we have to draw db. So we actually have to draw this line. Ooh, that's one of the best lines I've ever drawn. Um, and that's basically because um, we're going to use uh, triangle congruency to prove that these two triangles are congruent, therefore CPCTC. All right, um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so again, first step, draw db. Any two points, there exists one line because there's point D, point B, so you could draw a line between them. Why not? And um, db, step two, db is congruent to itself, and that's because of the reflexive property. All right, so reflexive comes back uh, uh, in there. And then ab is congruent to cd, and ad is congruent to cb. That was actually given. They, they gave that to us. And just to uh, look back at the proof here, we're actually proving this time that ABCD is a parallelogram. Um, and that's actually the proof. So it's kind of like the converse of what we studied in 9.1, where they told us that it's a parallelogram. And then we have to prove um, that you know two sides are congruent or two angles are congruent. Now it's just flipped. Okay, So now we're actually proving that this is a parallelogram. Okay, so they did give us that AB is congruent to CD, and they marked it here. So we got AB, the double slash marks, right, is congruent to uh, CD, and then AD is congruent to BC. That was totally given. How nice of them. And then we're saying that these two triangles are congruent. Well, by what triangle congruency? Okay, we got a side here. That's the same as this side. We have a side here. It's the same as this side. And then this side that we drew is congruent. So we got side, 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 side. So this is by side, 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 triangle congruency theorem. All right. So good old triangle congruency kicks back in. And then basically from that point, we just proved that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Therefore, angle ABD should be congruent to CDB. And ADB, uh, the angle, should be congruent to angle CBD. And that is because, well, if these two triangles are congruent, that means all of their little parts, right? All their little parts. So CPCTC, um, that's the reason, okay? Now, if uh, those guys are congruent, 
So let's go ahead and mark this ABD. ABD right here has to be congruent to CDB right here, right? And then this angle, ADB, has to be congruent to our other angle, uh, CBD. Um, so if those guys are congruent, therefore, these guys, AB has to be parallel to DC and AD has to be parallel to BC. And that's basically because the converse of alternate interior angles, okay? So remember the converse of alternate interior angle theorem is basically, well, if this angle is congruent to that angle, these two lines are parallel, okay? So that's the idea of the converse of alternate interior angle. All right, so ABCD is parallelogram because that fits the definition or the criterion of a parallelogram. Okay, again, the criterions were that, uh, well, we had to have uh, the opposite sides being congruent. We also had to have parallel or the opposite sides also being parallel. So since we proved it, this thing is a parallelogram because it features all the criterions uh, that satisfy those conditions. All right, so moving on to proving that the opposite angles. So we did opposite sides last one, uh, last time, but now we're gonna do the angles. So the theorem basically just says, if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if we're looking here, they do give us that A is congruent to C, okay? We already learned that the opposite sides of a parallelogram uh, are congruent, okay? So that's congruent to that congruent, or that angle is congruent to that angle, and angle B is gonna be congruent to angle D. So they gave that to us. Um, now we just have to prove that this whole par uh, quadrilateral is a, par a parallelogram. So <clears throat> if we look here, angle A, B, C and D, those measures have to add up to 360. Now that is by the polygon, because we are dealing with the polygon, many-sided uh, shape, polygon angle sum theorem. And remember, that's that idea of the formula that we learned previously, all right? And we have four sides, so four minus two is two, and two times 180 is 360. So that's the polygon angle sum theorem, all right, from the past. Now, so given the information, the measure for angle A should be equal to the measure of C, okay, because they are congruent, and B should be equal to the measure of D. So by substitution, instead of saying measure A plus measure B, we're going to say, well, B is D, so instead of plus the measure of B, it's going to be plus another measure of D. And instead of plus the measure of C, or, or I'm sorry, A, or, or yeah, C, I'm sorry. Um, since C is A, we're gonna say plus another A, and then plus the D like originally. So notice how we just substituted in right here in our proof, okay? So we have two measures of angle A plus two measures of angle D equaling 360 divide both sides by two is gonna basically, again, again, what they're talking about here is dividing by two here to both sides. What happens is you get the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D have to equal, well, what's 360 divided by two? 180, okay? So we just basically prove that A plus D right here add up to 180, they are supplementary. Okay, so, and the rest of the proof goes that way. A and D are supplementary, and therefore, AB has to be parallel to DC by the converse, by the converse of the same side same side angle postulate. There we go. All right, so again, same side postulate is, remember when we learned this and we said, well, if this angle plus this angle equal or add up to uh, 180 degrees, 
right? Those are considered same side, and that was involving two parallel lines cutting through a transversal. So that's what they're talking about with the converse of the same side angle postulate, okay? Because we know this angle plus that angle add up to 180. Therefore, we're dealing with parallel lines. And since they are parallel lines, we can finally say ABCD is a parallelogram um, because, again, it's satisfying the definition of a parallelogram. A parallelogram has two congruent sides. Forgot the song. There's a song. There's a teacher who knows a song. It's pretty float. Pretty pretty funny. All right. So um, the last proof of the day, and then we get into the algebra aspect of things, is basically we're proving that the bisecting diagonals. Okay, again, these are the diagonals right here. Like AC is a diagonal, and BD or DB is a diagonal. Okay. Uh, basically, that the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other. All right. So cuts perfectly in half. All right, so AE is going to be congruent to CE, and DE is congruent to BE. We've already learned this. All right, so now we're doing, again, this proof where we're proving that ABCD, the whole thing, is a parallelogram. Now, luckily, they do give us uh, that AE is congruent to CE, and DE is congruent to BE. That was nice of them. Um, now we have to follow out what they gave us. So angle AEB has to be congruent to angle uh, CED. Let me go ahead and mark that. AEB. Oops. Get, get out of there. AEB has to be congruent to CED. Um, why? Okay. Well, I see that they're vertical angles, aren't they? So they are vertical angles. So that's why they're congruent. And then step three, well, let's take a step back. We have this side here, who is the same as this side right here. We have this angle that's the same as this angle. It's congruent to that angle, right? And then this side is congruent to this side. Do you guys see how they're setting up triangle congruency theorem? So they're literally trying to say that triangle uh, AEB is going to be congruent to the other triangle, uh, CED. And what's really crazy is you can actually do the same thing um, with these angles right here, okay, with the whole vertical angle deal. And then you can also say that the other two uh, triangles, triangle AED, is congruent to the other triangle triangle uh, CEB, all right? And that's because of the side angle side triangle congruence theorem. So they're coming back. They're basically saying that uh, this triangle, uh, triangle one is congruent to this triangle and this triangle is congruent to that triangle, okay? And then basically with that, we're able to say um, that since these triangles are the same, AB is congruent to CD. Okay, so they're little parts. So AB is right here to CD. It's congruent right there. And AD is congruent to CB. Okay, and that's because of their little parts, CPC, TC. Whenever you're talking about the little parts of something that you've proven to be the same, think CPC, TC, okay? Because corresponding parts, we're talking about the little parts. Now, since those two, since the opposite sides are the same, um, then we can prove that this is a parallelogram because, again, uh, if both, uh, sorry, my pen is always, I think I want a new pen for Christmas. There we go. If both pairs of opposite sides are uh, congruent for this quadrilateral, um, then it's a parallelogram. All right. And that's basically it. All right. So let's finally start to see application of this. Um, and we'll move on to what's really important here. All right. So verifying the figures are parallelograms. So we're given some expressions. We've got to solve for a variable. 
um, plug it back in and see if this uh, quadrilateral is a parallelogram because right now we're not 100% sure. Um, so we have to show that it's a parallelogram. We do know it's a quadrilateral, right? Four sides. We just have to make sure it's a parallelogram. So let's think about those criterions in the back of our head as we solve these. Now I know that BC, if this is a parallelogram, uh, BC has to be congruent to AD. So again, that's one of our criterions that I have to check. All right, so they are congruent. So BC is X plus 14, and that should equal AD, which is 3X. Let's go ahead and solve for X. And I get 2X division property x equals 7, plug it back in, and it looks like we get 7 plus this 14, so bc should equal, um, let me see, 21, yep, okay, and if that's equaling 21, let's see, 3 times 7 down here, 21 as well, so yes, though that makes sense, so those opposite sides check out, but we have to double check uh, what's given to us. So we're going to double check that AB is going to be the same or congruent to uh, CD. So we ask to check that as well. So again, we know that AB has to be congruent to the other side CD. So let's go ahead and set it up. Uh, AB is 5Y minus the 4 and CD is that 2Y min uh, plus 8. All right, let's go ahead and solve for Y. Subtraction property. I'm going to go ahead and do two steps at once, all right, oops, so that's a plus four, so, sorry, my bad, let me clean it up, there we go, not, not highlighter, there we go, plus four, and minus two y right there, okay, these cancel out, five y minus two y is three y, and eight plus four is 12, division property, and we got y equals four. All right, good stuff. So y equals four, let's plug it back in. I'll do that right over here, five times four minus the four, uh, two times that four uh, plus that eight. So we got 20 minus four, that's 16, very nice. And we got two times, that's eight plus eight, which is also 16, very nice. So yeah, those check out just fine. So since the opposite sides are congruent, um, we know um, that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. This matches one of our criterions, all right? So again, if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, we got a parallelogram. So that's one of the situations that it satisfies. All right, so example two. All right, so example two, uh, again, we're showing, we know this is quadrilateral, four sides. We just have to prove that it's a parallelogram. So let's do this. Uh, Z, they do give us some values. If Z is 11 um, and W is 4.5. Okay, so let's su substitute these in. Let's plug them back in. Okay, so 9Z is really 9 times 11 plus that 19. And that's going to be 99 plus 19. I'm going to do some quick math in my head. And I get 118 degrees. All right, so please double check me. I did it off the top of my head. I think I'm okay. But yeah, 118 degrees. All right, so if that's 118 degrees, uh, this angle down here should also be 118 degrees um, because, well, we're thinking in parallelogram, right? So let's check that out. Uh, 11 times Z, which is really just 11, right? So 11 times 11 minus 3, that's 121 minus three, and that checks out. I get 118 degrees. All right, good. So these two angles, these two opposite angles check out. Now we have to check the other two opposite angles, which have to be congruent to each other as well. So we're going to use W, all right, to plug them in. So 12W is really 12 times 4.5 plus that eight, and then 14W is really four times 4.5 and then minus that one. Uh, you can grab your calculator real quick if you want. You can use the whole decimals. Um, nothing's wrong with that. Um, so again, 
12 times 4.5, uh, you should get 54, and then 54 plus that 8 should get you 62, so that's 62 degrees. And then lastly, 14, the other angle, 14 times 4.5, and then minus the 1, and yeah, okay, cool. We also get 62 degrees, so it looks like these all check out. All right, so, yep, opposite angles are congruent. This guy is definitely a parallelogram. All right, your turn number one. Um, show that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So again, uh, you have to know where you're substituting in your value um, to double check. Now, be aware that these two angles right here are not uh, congruent. They shouldn't be, not necessarily. They can be if they're perfectly 90-90, but and this doesn't look like that, right? So um, they are supplementary, so they should add up to 180. All right, so that's the setup for there. All right, your turn number two. Sorry, your turn number two. If I want to make one mistake, it's always in the labeling. So that's your turn number two. Um, show that each quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, same thing. Know where you're substituting in your variables and then double check. They're talking about diagonals and this is my only hint that I'm really gonna give you. You should know how to set it up, all right? Have a great day guys and if you have any questions again, let me know.